Jimmy. Ready for this? <laughs> All right. So to preface my speech, I have to tell a quick story from about nine years ago. Jimmy was my best man in my wedding, uh, and decided to begin his speech by saying this: When I first met Nate, I thought he was a cocky douche. <laughs> so for years. For years, Jimmy and I joked that one day, I would have the chance to get him back. But while preparing for this, I kept thinking, Nate, he was 21. He was immature. Nate, you're 30 now. You should be mature about this speech. And I should, I really, really should, but I can't. <laughs> I just can't. Here's my one shot, so here goes. Jimmy and I have known each other for a very long time, since we were probably 12 or 13, and I've gotten to know each other really well over the last few years. So well, in fact, that I decided to compile a list of ways um, over the years that I should have known I would end up here, the best man at my best friend's gay wedding. <laughs> Number one, Jimmy was a sassy little bitch. <laughs> Two, <everyone. laughs> yeah. And now it's that. Number two, there were multiple times in our childhood and teenage years that I can recall Jimmy for whatever reason finding himself in women's clothing. <laughs> Three, it always seems his clothes were a little too tight. He's more of a schmedium man, I say. Uh, especially when we're going to the clubs wearing express shirts. Yes. So, for number four through six, it takes a little bit of explaining. Jimmy and I were gymnasts. There's number four. <laughs> and at 16, we were asked by the local ballet, there's number five jumping in there. <laughs> to be in their next show, Peter Pan. During this play, we had to wear makeup, specifically eyeliner. Someone say number six. Okay. After the play, we noticed Jimmy just kept having eyeliner on. Everywhere we went, there was just a smidge of eyeliner on his eyes. I swear it took us out four to five months before he quit wearing that stuff. We, we had to make fun of him until he finally just quit. All right. Jimmy, can you stand up? Stand up. Can you do a jumping pirouette for me? Yes, yes. Come on. Ow. Do it. Show everyone. Woo! All right. Thank you. Woo! That's number seven. <laughs> Jimmy used to do double pirouettes and spins and shit all the time. It drove us all nuts. After the ballet, he was absolutely obsessed with spinning around. And I, I well, he can do that, so I was gonna say he's gonna bust some out on the floor later, but he just did the double, so that was good. Number eight takes another quick story. Uh, Jimmy and I were roommates all through college, and for a good three to four years afterward. Our friend Billy was in the bathroom getting ready to take a shower. And after a few minutes, Jimmy opened the door nonchalantly just to grab his toothbrush. <laughs> or something like that. Billy was just standing there. So our friend Billy was just standing there, buck naked. Rubbing his nipples, I think, or something. And Jimmy says, ew. And then proceeds to stare just a little too long. <laughs> just saying. Number nine. I've spent years trying to get this guy to drink beer. He won't do it. Not a freaking drop. Just foo foo drinks and other girly beverages since we're 20 years old. But as most of our family knows, who doesn't love a good margarita, right, Jimmy? And finally, a last minute addition from our conversation last night. Did you guys all know Jimmy was a stripper? So this, this started after he came out, which is cool, but still super gay, so I had to add it to the list. And, in all seriousness, for a little bit, I'm very proud to be standing up with you two today. I want you to know that. Whether this was a Chris or a Christina by your side, I'm proud to be your best man. <laughs> now Chris, there must be something about you, Chris. Seriously, Jimmy had the, the choice between two ripped manly doctors prior to this, and he ended up choosing you. So you were perfect for him, Indy number two. And I can tell he had fallen in love because Jimmy's kind of let himself go. He used to be the rich, chiseled one of the friends, and he barely looks any better than me now, so. <laughs> so, Chris, you, in, all, in all seriousness, Chris, you were the first man in Jimmy's life who has truly challenged him, pushed him to achieve greater things, and made him happy to be who he really is. You are two of my favorite people I have in my life. I've enjoyed our adventures, our trips, 
our stupid drunken debates. Chris? <laughs> and most of all, watching the both of you guys find your soulmate. Over the years, Jimmy may drive you absolutely nuts sometimes. Like, you probably know this by now. He's going to, I don't know, make you pay a thousand dollars in Mexico for smashing a jet ski, maybe. <laughs> Definitely have. Just love him anyway, man. And he might, no, he will do a million stupid other things. Just love him anyway. Remember to always put each other first, and each of you will always be taken care of. I'm excited to watch you both have an amazing marriage now and in the future. I genuinely love you both, not in the way that they'll be loving each other tonight, but I definitely do. <laughs> so I'd like, to, I'd like to say a toast, so if ever can please grab a glass and repeat after me. So raise a glass to these two men. Raise a glass to these two men. The best of friends they've got. The best of friends they've got. Here's to all of us hoping that Chris Oh, Takes his fair turn on the bottom. Cheers. Now, please give your attention over to Chris's brother, Colin. <laughs>